Hello there, this is Jude Socrates. Welcome to video number 12 for my series in multivariable calculus at 5C at Pasadena City College. So in our last video, we did volumes of solids, but today we're going to do one thing and one thing only, and that is we're going to change the order of integration, change the order of the differentials in a double integral. So we're basically just going to look at one example. It's going to be a short video for a change. And we are at page 22 of our PDF. Okay, so we're not really going to need our PDF today. Here's an example which is kind of similar to what I have over there, uh, only in the sense that it involves the cosine function. Uh, but that's about it. <laughs> so um, you might also notice that uh, I don't have any labels in our integral limits because this is how it is usually seen, these double integrals, in just about any book that you have in multivariable calculus. I personally like to label the limits, as you know, x equals 0 to x equals 4 because we have a dx over here and then y equals square root of x to y equals 2 because we have a dy over here, okay? So what we want to do is find the exact value of this double integral, okay? I asked Maple and uh, Maple threw a fit and by that I meant, um, you, you know what it's, how it says sometimes, not responding at the top of a program. Yeah, that's, that's what it was telling me. And after about 20 seconds, well, I thought maybe I need to just uh, do alt control del and get it over with. Uh, I finally stopped and just gave me basically the same uh, double integral <laughs> that I input over here. Okay, No answer, essentially. Okay. Uh, and, and why is that so? Well, remember that when we do a double integral, they're basically two major steps. There's an inner integral, and then after we perform the inner integral, in other words, we need to find an antiderivative that will uh, work for this function with respect to y. Uh, then we have to go to the outer integral, and keeping our fingers crossed that uh, we can also find an antiderivative for whatever we find in that outer integral once we get there, okay? So we don't even know after step one whether we will get in step two um, a function that we can integrate, okay? But um, right now, uh, we have cosine y cubed dy. There is no x. Everything is in y. So, uh, yeah, how would we find an antiderivative for that function, okay? Um, you know what, I didn't ask Maple. Maybe Maple knows, I doubt it. Um, yeah, Maple doesn't know. So when this happens, it means, um, sorry bud, uh, I don't have an answer to your question, okay? So basically that's what happened earlier, okay? Uh, Maple just said, uh, whatever you're looking for, uh, that's what I'm giving back to you, <laughs> okay? So yeah. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a lot of help. Okay, so we don't have an antiderivative for the inner integral. Problem. Oh, but by the way, um, you can always ask Maple, is there an approximate value that maybe you can give me? Okay, so uh, let's see, evaluate numerically. Uh oh, it's doing it again. Oh no, oh no, alt control del, not responding, not responding. How long, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, thank goodness. 0.32978, whatever. Okay, so that is an approximation for that double integral, okay? What is this? It's, it's exact value though. That is what we really want to do. Okay, so maybe we'll just save this answer and we'll go back to it later. Compare our final answer to what we have over here. 
Okay, so how do we change the order of integration so that hopefully we can clear both steps, find an inner integral, and then also find the outer integral, okay? So the key to this is basically understand the domain, okay? Because um, here, what do we have? This is a type one integral. X is going from zero to four, and then Y is going from square root of X to two, okay? So by changing the order of integration, we mean let's rewrite this integral if possible so that dy is on the outside and dx is on the inside, okay? Let me warn you right now, <laughs> that doesn't mean I'll just change these two integral symbols, okay? Or maybe just change x to y, okay? It doesn't work that way, okay? So how does it work? Understand the domain, okay? So we said x is going from, where's my element symbol, 0 to 4. Okay, and y is going from square root of x to 2, okay? So what that means is that y is between square root of x and 2, okay? So square root of x is less than or equal to y, which is also less than or equal to 2, okay? So what does this mean, okay? These two pieces of information define a region, our domain, okay? So of course, what are we going to do? We're going to sketch that domain. We know that x must be between 0 and 4. y must be between square root of x and 2, okay? So uh, let's think of that in terms of bounds, okay? The lower bound for y is y equals square root of x, and the upper bound is y equals square root of 2, okay? So now let's go to GeoGebra and let's draw this domain. All right, so we're going to stay in two dimensions because we're drawing the, drawing the domain. x is from 0 to 4, right? So we have that set up, and then we said that the lower bound is y equals square root of x. So, uh, you know, I don't think I've used that shortcut. You can use shift six, which is the up arrow to make x to the one half. Ooh, there it is. So that is y equals square root of x. And then we have y equals two. Ooh, -hoo, there it is. Okay, so x is between zero and four. y is between square root of x and two, okay? So this is the domain of our uh, double integral, okay? And again, it's a type one, right? We are shooting arrows, vertical arrows, from zero to four. Those vertical arrows enter our domain at square root of x and exit at two, y equals two, okay? So the given problem is a type one setup. To change the order of integration, we need to look at this domain now as a type two setup. In other words, we will scan our region with horizontal arrows going from this point to this point. Okay, because those are where our region begins and ends, okay? So instead of x from going from 0 to 4, y is going from 0 up to 2, okay? So those are our outer limits. y is going from 0 to 2. Let me write that down, okay? So how about x, right? So we need an x value on the left and an x value on the right. Where do the arrows enter 
where do the arrows exit okay this is our region so our arrows enter at x equals 0 the y-axis and they exit at this curve okay what was the name of this curve it was y equals square root of x but now we're looking for x okay so if y equals square root of x x must be y squared okay so that is our those are our limits x is going from 0 to y squared okay so we are ready to go back to our scientific notebook and set up our double integral all right so we are ready now to express our given double integral as a type 2 integral from type 1 we're going to make it now type 2 so dy on the outside and we said that this time we start with y on the outside y is going from 0 to 2 okay excellent now, how about x? We said we start at the y-axis, where x is 0. And we end at the square root function, except we now reverse it, invert it, as x equals y squared. Okay? Since y equals square root of x, x must be y squared. All right. The function does not change. So we still have cosine y cubed. As our integrand. Okay, so um, does this solve the problem? Does it make it any better? Okay, it's the same function, but this time we have dx as our differential. Okay, so remember, um, because dx is our differential, y is a constant. Okay, so for the in inner integral, We have this, let's copy this whole thing. Okay, so our antiderivative, the div, is just, well, if that's a constant, well, we're just integrating dx, it's just x times cosine of y cubed. Okay, that's it. That's our antiderivative because the whole of cosine y cubed, whatever it is, it's just a constant. Our variable is x. Our variable of integration is x. Okay. So now we are ready to plug in our limits. Okay. So our upper limit is x is y squared. So replace x with y squared. We just get y squared times cosine y cubed. Okay. Lower limit is zero. So we just get zero. Okay, remember we're multiplying cosine y cubed to x. Okay, multiply by zero, we get zero. So therefore, our outer integral becomes, so y goes from zero to, and the only thing that we have is y squared cosine y cubed. Okay, and of course we have the dy. Okay, so we cleared step one, find the inner integral. How about step two, the outer integral? Hmm, is this something that we can integrate? I do believe yes, okay, because now we have y squared cosine y cubed dy. Before it was just cosine y cubed, okay? Now we have a y squared to help us out. It's just a u substitution. So, let's use u equals y cubed, and of course, uh, du equals 3y squared dy. And uh, usually, we solve for dy uh, in terms of du, but notice that we have y squared dy in our integral, okay? So therefore, it makes sense to just keep them together. And so y squared dy is one third of du. Okay, see what I did there? 
why solve for dy when you need y squared dy? And y squared dy is already right there. Okay? So uh, the outer integral then becomes, okay, so the antiderivative. What we want is the antiderivative of y squared cosine y cubed dy. This will now be the antiderivative of one third. It's one third du, but we have a cosine y cubed, so that is a cosine of u because of our substitution. Uh, antiderivative of cosine is sine, not negative sine. Okay, so this is one third sine of u and bring back our u who is u u is y cubed that always sounds strangely u is y and it sounds grammatically wrong but yeah okay so we have our antiderivative and i do believe we are on the home stretch so this out integral is now one third y cubed and we integrate from zero to two. okay and so uh zero goes away thank you sine of zero is zero you always have to be called uh worry of cosine though cosine is going to kill you so it's just the two that we have two cubed and so that is sine of eight. Yay, we are finished, okay? Um, I said, let's save the answer that we got earlier. Maple said, I can't give you the exact answer, but I can give you an approximation. Just give me a few seconds. Uh, and I do believe it's because it's doing partitions, okay? So it's subdividing and all that. I, I honestly don't know what what maple does. Maple does what maple does. Okay, is this the right answer? Well, um, you have a scientific calculator. If you encounter this answer, um, you can plug this in. Remember that that is eight radians, all right? So you need to be in radian mode when you are using your scientific calculator. I'm not even sure maple has a degrees mode, okay? so. Let's ask, are we correct? Aha, yes, I do believe we are correct. Okay, so yes, I was right. This is not even 20 minutes, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, when we come back for our next video, we are going to do something um, far, far more intensive. We are going to still stay with double integrals, but we are going to look at them in a different way. We're going to do double rectangle, double, <laughs> double integrals in polar coordinates instead of Cartesian coordinates. So until next time, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.